Swami, you are beyond attributes, you are formless, you are ultimate, you are consciousness. In fact, you are prior to consciousness. This sage broke his monum. Sai Baba, Sai Baba, Sai Baba. And he started dancing. I have no birth now. I have no birth now. During this avatar hood, only few people reach the goal. But, oh. you are Brahma, you are Vishnu, you are Maheshwara. They said, you are wasting your time, go back. My loving pranams at Bhagwan's lotus feet. Co-travelers on path of spirituality, elders and youngsters. I'm so delighted to be here. After several years, after 2016, once again, an opportunity to see Swami in uh, all of us. I don't know how much you can understand. I'm so delighted, so happy to be here amongst you. And before starting this, I was taken to Swami's room where Swami physically used to come and stay. It transported me to the totally different world. Two things literally Swami gave me now is physically present. He plucked my cheek and he said, good boy which he used to do there in Parthi. And another one, most important, what he gave me the first experience in 1989, he gave me right here in few seconds. The experience of what we are, who we are, It's a wonderful thing. I don't want to dwell more on that to start with. Only he and he can do that. I am not uh, doubting your uh, faith and conviction in Bhagwan, But I want to share my feelings. What Bhagwan stands for, Swami stands for. We may think that he is just a five feet three inch come in a human form. It's a delusion which he has created for our benefit. Just to tell you one small thing that how the diamond merchant will recognize diamond just by Look at it. Bhagwan, when he was a lad of 24 years, he went to Ramana Ashram. We all know we call Bhagwan Ramana Maharshi. And Ramana, he used to love his devotees. He was the one who gave to the world path of self-inquiry, who am I, to reach the ultimate goal of life. So Swamiji went there, moment Raman Maharshi saw a boy of 24, just around Swami's, sorry, his ashram, he got up, ran, and with folded hand, he started dancing. Are Parabrahmanaskam, Parabrahmanaskam. And he pleaded, Bhagwan, please, please come to my ashram, please come to my ashram. Swamiji went there. You may think that, how do I know? This happened in 1950, when Swamiji physically was 24 year old boy. Swami himself has told, this is a story in Bindavan, 
ట్రై వృందావన్ సెషన్ సో రమణ టుక్ స్వామీజీ ఇన్ సైడ్ అండ్ యాజ్ పర్ ద రొటీన్ హీ యూస్ టు ప్రిపేర్ సమ్ నైస్ డిషెస్ ఫర్ హిస్ డివోటీ రమణ so he pleaded to bhagwan swami ji can i bring ashrams prasadam swami said yes he bring in the plate whatever he had prepared swami ji lovingly started eating and he left few morsels in the plate then ramana asked swami ji swami ji please is it enough moment swami ji says enough like a child ramana maharshi snatched that plate from bhagwan's hand and he started licking started eating and he started dancing i have no birth now i have no birth now i have got the prasadam given by para brahman himself then he remembered raman marshi that he had promised his mother that i'll get you moksha because he without seeking mother's permission he left home and reached the goal but mother was pained so she he told her that i'll get you the moksha so he prayed to swami ji swami ji this is my mother's tomb please bless her swami blessed her then he said swami ji this is lakshmi's tomb lakshmi swami cow who used to give milk to all the ashramites please bless her swami blessed the cow's tomb then swami asked him where is your tomb he put his head down swami this one swami blessed him again ramana maharshi started oh now there's no birth i am through why i am telling this raman maharshi whole world calls him bhagwan he identified immediately with the first look what bhagwan is and here he was playing with us talking to us he was uh, moving with us sometime people said no he ate like us moved like us no he moved with us but his movements were different even though you say i don't know how many people had an opportunity or from the videos the way he eats the way he sits the way he speaks is divine only those who have done some sadhana will know what swami stands for once it so happened that swami ji was taking a team to uti he used to take vips as a team group before reaching uh, from bindavan to uti by road on the way swami a playful mood one person had a polaroid camera at that time that was a very high tech camera where you click the photo immediately the processed positive copy will come out colored copy that time it was not possible to unless you get the film and process it and make it a positive but this was a unique so swami called that gentleman in the group that come swami gave a pose and told him take picture somebody some senior devotee came to set swami's robe proper say hey, get out go away. then photo was clicked zoom with few seconds picture came trio brahma vishnu mahesh 
Dattatri. Then everybody was astonished. We took a picture of Swami. Instantaneously, it came out as a three. Then Swami told the devotee, see why I shouted at you. Because if you had touched me at that time, you would have been burnt. I was at a different energy level. But then, now, one of the very senior devotee, it was puzzled. He said, what is this? Swamiji, with the team, reached Uti, then asked, as usual, before Swami gives a love and talk or interaction to the students there, Uti school, Swami used to tell some senior devotee, somebody to speak. So he called that gentleman who was puzzled because that gentleman said, Swamiji, today we want to know who you are. Picture is exactly what you are, but in appearance, you are Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, who you are. Then Swami asked him very lovingly, what is your thinking? What do you think of me, who I am? Then he prostrated in front of Swami and he said, Swamiji, you are Brahma, you are Vishnu, you are Maheshwara. Swami said, hey, very coolly, Swami answered, hey, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, they are my managers. Then Swami, who you are? I am the proprietor of the whole universe. I have employed these three managers. They will carry out all the activities of the whole universe according to the rules and regulations given to them. When I come on earth, no rules apply to me. I can pick anybody from any level and raise them to any level. They will not question me because no rules apply to me. That is Swamiji. Another time, after Swamiji's physical uh, form disappeared, a group of uh, research scholars in Satyasai University, they had uh, little desire to go and see in Himalayas to visit some uh, caves, gufas, where sages sit silently. They wanted to have a taste of it. A group of uh, eight people went, roamed around the whole Himalayas, and then one cave, outside the cave itself, one sage was sitting, and uh, when they say that uh, we want to enter inside, they say, no, 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 I am assigned the duty not to allow anyone to go inside. Why? Because sage there is meditating such a long time, maybe months, years. He is in monam. And my duty is to see that he is not disturbed. They said, see, we have come from uh, far off place. These youngsters, they were chanting Vedas and moving around. So this sage was uh, fascinated that youngsters talked uh, chanting Veda in Sanskrit. That is something. He said, okay, I will allow you just to have his darshan from the distance, but no movement, no sound, nothing. Please, otherwise I don't know what will happen to me. Okay? They went and sat there. Moment they sat there, that sage, the senior sage, told brother, with a thought process, ask this assistant to inquire who they are. These boys said that we are research scholars and we are 
coming from Puttaparthi. He said, Puttaparthi, what is that? He said, uh, it is Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba's ashram. Moment they said that Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba, listening to the name of Sai Baba, this sage broke his monam and got up, Sai Baba, Sai Baba, Sai Baba. Then he said, you people have come from there. What are you doing here? He's there, he's still there. Then said, no, we wanted to have a darshan of all of you and see what is there in Himalayas. He said, you are wasting your time, go back. Whatever assignment he has given you, do that. That will reach you the goal. Not meditation, not running away. Whatever he has told you, do that. They were surprised. And then he said, why? You are not coming there. He said, you people do not know. There is an energy barrier. Lord has created between us and Him. Why? Because that, you know, I am just connecting to another devotee. He said, that you think that I have come to just to establish hospitals and colleges and schools and ashram? Far from that. Then that senior devotee asked Swami, then why have you come here? What else? He said, I have come because of the prayers of thousands of sages and saints in Himalayas. Then senior devotee asked, then where are they? Why are they not coming? Swamiji told him that once I allow them to come, you will stand no chance here. So, I have put energy barrier so that in the meantime, you all raise yourself up to that level. When they come, you will also be given a chance to be here. That is our Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba. He has no dearth of anything. Even now he is present, now, just now I experienced. He is very much, I, I don't know how to explain to you. Now, you may say, he has come, then so what? You may not believe that he is Sai Baba is God. Okay, doesn't matter. Once, I asked Swami, after he allowed me to join Puttaparthi for uh, MBA department as a professor. After having, getting the taste of what Bhagwan is, I feel that I wasted my earlier years, doesn't matter, at least now he is with us, with the awareness we have his darshan. So, when the youngsters, young MVA boys, they used to join and take the things a little lighter, I used to feel sorry for, I used to feel sorry for such boys and at times losing my calmness and tell them, boys, don't waste your time, man. You don't know who he is. Make the best use of him. So, I thought most appropriate person is to ask Swami directly. I asked Swamiji, these boys, you know, they don't know what Swami is. They are wasting their time. Swami, how to make them realize what you are? Then he said, what do you think what I am? Swami, you are beyond attributes. You are formless, you are ultimate, you are consciousness. In fact, you are prior to consciousness. You are nothingness. But for our sake, you are taking the form. They don't realize Swami. 
Then he told me, he pricked my nice balloon. He said, hey, when you were young, what were you? What was your opinion? To tell you the fact, I used to believe there is nothing like a form of a God. God is some power, some Shakti, which operates the whole universe. And when somebody asked me that ultimately you must have some form in your mind. Who is your deity? Whom do you believe God? I said, if at all you ask a form of God, that is my parents. Because they have given the birth. They have given me the guidance. So, those people who seriously asked me, they were nothing but my would-be in-laws, my father-in-law and mother-in-law, they had come to see me. Moment I gave them this uh, answer, there they cleared my case. They said, yes, we are ready to give our daughter to you. <laughs> because they have been Swami's devotee since 1963. So, Swami told me one nice thing. Because my agony was in a positive side. The how to help them? Why should they waste life like me? Then Swami said, See, don't start telling them that he is God, he is beyond everything. Nobody is interested in your uh, powerful talk like that. You tell them, Sai Baba is top to toe selfless. He is pure love. All the activities going on are selfless. And he doesn't want anything in return for himself. Such a selfless person, even if you consider the ordinary human being, doesn't matter, Swami said, such a selfless person, when he tells us something, will it not be for our good? Can it be anything which will uh, make us, uh, um, which will harm us? So, follow his teachings, follow his guidelines, because it's for our good. So, people think that Sai Baba came physical form, 85 years he was there. Now physical form is not there. Who cares? But he is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. If you want to be close to him, be close to his teachings. If you want to express your love to Bhagwan, translate or spend every moment of your life in translating his instructions into action. That will give you the true proximity. Not just living together with the avatar, breathing the same air, sh uh, sharing the same shelter, eating the same food, may give you little benefit. Just like a powerful magnet. When the iron filings, they come closer to the powerful magnet, they get attracted. And for some time, the magnetic power is given to the iron filing also. But if the magnet or those filings are kept away from the magnet, after some time, magnetic power will go away. Whereas, if he translate him, um, translate his teachings into action, he will be with us forever. Once Swamiji gave a nice uh, definition of darshan. He said, people come in to Puttaparthi, they, seeing me, feel very happy. They get transformed from ordinary devotee to sadhaka. And they start loving everyone because the effect of the proximity. But 
moment they go out they forget about swami they get absorbed in their routine thing and their effect is so long they are here in puttaparthi that is when we considered him just a physical entity but those devotees those people serious on a spiritual path they connect his teachings they keep everything what he has said in his mind in their minds and put into action then swami ji's grace swami ji's guidance is available any part of the world you go because they becomes become mahatmas when if we tune ourselves to that wavelength and follow absolutely thought word deed thinking then you get transformed into paramahansa then whatever world you are you will be benefited you will reach the goal talking about the reaching the goal thank you reaching the goal of uh, life yeah that's okay that's okay distance over <clears throat> once in 1997 <clears throat> december 97 i remember 30th of december there was a uh, international cricket match in puttaparthi the only match which took place in puttaparthi uh, international cricket players came for sake of bhagwan and uh, like a child uh, he was so excited so he used to come and tell me share whatever is happening he said bhagya you know there was a, a hurdle that uh, this cricket match cannot be um, shown to all over the world cannot be broadcast because there were no proper uh, equipment available so now they just told me that they are bringing the equipment trucks which will do the job of uh, as if it's a studio and it can be shown any part of the world i said swami ji you have ways and means to give darshan to all the devotees and uh, uh, after seeing this cricket match thousands and hundreds of thousand millions of people will come they will know that what is uh, puttaparthi who is sai baba they will come to have your darshan and they will be benefited he said hey i am not interested in quantity i want the quality i said swami ji when they come they will see what swami ji stands for and because my goal was only to reach the goal of life so i said swami ji thousands and lakhs of people you will allow them to cross the ocean of samsara and reach the goal he said no 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 swami in your avatar oh i am sure he said no 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 i said why swami he said only few to be counted on fingers i said what swami ordinary teachers sorry gurus they can take across so many disciples to cross the ocean of samsara and you say no only few no swami i can't understand i was <clears throat> very disturbed is it dekho dekho you people are uh, playing some uh, games isn't it because 11th january is the wonderful time where all the institutions of satya sai institutions they come to puttaparthi and uh, have a sports day so that year even uh, uh, teachers were asked to take part in the sports 
So, which I was not interested in. And then uh, complaint went to Swami. The Swami Bhagya is not participating in anything. Then Swami said, Kaiku, why you are not, uh, you don't want to play any game? I said, Swami, there's only one game, game of life, to see oneness in all. Oh, bara spiritual, tum ho gaya hai. So he was trying to evade me. Then finally, they put me in one game, hurdle game. They went and told Swami, Swami Bhagya has agreed. And he said, okay, Bhagya, in hurdle game always first. Because I was relating everything with life. You must always pay attention to his words. Swami said, my name is Sai, S-A-I. See always inner significance of what Bhagwan tells you. Not simply the physical level, we cuts the jokes and all. So, I used to always pay tune, attention to that. So, when he said that uh, you are first in hurdle game, uh, then I wanted to again get the answer. Swami, I am talking about the all of us can get realization in this very avatar hood. He said, no. Dekho, yesterday you people were playing the game. Sunday tha, you people were playing the game where there was a line. All the teachers, how many teachers were there? I said, Swami, 60, 70 teachers. All the teachers were standing in the queue. A referee was there. He was ready to give the vessel whistle and there was a goal put that all the teachers once the whistle is given there will be five minutes time given to you whosoever reaches touches the goal other side will be called as a winner he will be given the prize it was there isn't it I said yes Swami he said how many people reach the goal I said Swamiji uh, one person clearly reached the goal. Second person, he just touched and uh, five minutes or over. He said, Dekho, how many teachers started? I said, Swami, around 70, 80 teachers. Dekho, only two people reached the goal. I said, Swamiji, please now. This is not the, just a game which we are playing. I am talking about the goal to be reached in life. And you have a capability, unlimited capacity. When ordinary gurus can take uh, two, three disciples, you can take all of us. He said, Deku, Deku, Deku. When whistle was given, you people had clarity of the goal where you have to reach? Yes, Swami. All of you knew the path? Yes, Swami. After the whistle was given, and again when the time got over, only two people reached. Yes, Swami. Where were the others? Swami, some person was. Uh, quite close to the goal. Some people, they couldn't halfway. Some people just begun, they fell down. But, Swami said, but everybody progressed, isn't it? Yes, Swami. But reaching goal, only two. He said, exactly. During this avatarhood, only few people reached the goal. But all of you will make the progress because I have given you the clarity of the goal I have indicated the path to you what else do you want? continue wow what a lesson once I asked Swamiji Swamiji when we see you physically we know that you are omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent and you are always with us. But many a times, because with Swami, we are all open, He is Antaryami. So no point in trying to uh, manipulate the things in front of Him. So, Swamiji, when we are away, little away from you physically, we forget that you are omnipresent, omniscient, you are with us. 
Why do I forget Swami? I should have a strong will not to forget any moment. He said, Hey, you think you are greater than Vishwamitra and Vashishta? They also took, they were also in Maya, they also took Sri Ramchandra as a boy, they started teaching him mantras and things like that. So you think that you are greater than them? I said, Swami, I am not comparing myself with uh, Vishwamitra and Vashishta. And I am not talking about Sri Ram. I am talking about my Sai Rama. Why do I forget? He said, uh, kya kar sakta hai? What can I do? You have a lot of uh, Vasnas, Prius, births. Swami, but that is there now. That means I can never reach. I can never have a willpower, strong will to remember everything about your omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence. He said, no, not like that. See, you eat food, right? Yes, Swami. Jaisa an, vaisa man. If you eat sattvic food, you will get sattvic thoughts. And sattvic thoughts, you can have a willpower, strong will. And sattvic food doesn't mean only eating curd rice, fruits, boiled vegetables. How the ingredients have been procured, that also determines the sattvicness of the food. With what money? Who cooks the food? Those thoughts also go in the food you eat. Then who serves you the food? That also his or her thoughts will be included in your food and will manifest in your thoughts. And what environments you are eating the food, that will have impact on your mind. So, I was wondering, then he said, sattvic food is not only through mouth. In fact, what comes out from the mouth is more important. How you speak, your soft speech, truthful, short, no gossiping, no talking ill of anybody. That is the purpose of tongue, two purposes which tongue has been given. Okay? Then he said, food is not only through mouth. What you see through eyes, that also has impact on your mind. What you hear, that also will impact your mind, thought process. What you taste, what you smell, what you touch, all through five senses. It's an input, food input. So, Swamiji, it's very difficult. Then he said, not only that. So I said, Swamiji, we need your grace, Swami. He said, my grace is always there. But you're not utilizing it. The grace, what can I do? Your vessel is so small. And in that vessel also, you have holes, drains. Through that, my grace goes away. My grace is always there. So, Swami, what do I do? He said, plug those holes. What are those holes? And how to plug them? He said, see, throughout the day, what you think, bad thoughts will drain my grace. With whom you meet, you shake your hand and talk. That also will determine how much grace can be retained. You meet people, you talk to people, you see videos and you read, you entertain the thoughts and this and that. All these are drains through which my grace will get drained. Plug them and then you see your will will become so strong, it will be equivalent to my will. Say, wow, Swami. So just to blame that 
Swami's grace is not the Swami's grace more on him, more on him, n- not the, so much on me. It's wrong. We have to qualify ourselves to receive and retain His grace. His limits are, uh, sorry, His capacities are boundless. He can go to any extent to help us. See, many times, because of our past karma, we have to walk on the path laden with stones, thorns, pebbles, glass pieces. At that time, if he struggle, very difficult. Best thing is to pray to him. Pray, pray. When you pray, out of his mercy, he will not come and sweep my path. He will give me a safety shoes. Walk. Come on. Nothing will happen to you. Because he says, goal clarity I have given you. You know where to go. Path you is prepared, or the path you have to travel is created by yourself, by your actions in the past, previous births, and even in this birth. So I can help you that. You say that I have to go. I will show you this is Bangalore is in this direction. And you start walking. You will say that uh, uh, Abhi Bangalore kabhi aata, Bangalore kabhi aata. When is Bangalore coming? Bangalore is not coming. You have to go to the Bangalore. I will indicate the direction in which you have to go. Walk, you have to. Another way, Swami said, supposing according to your karma, you have to walk on a path where under the scorching sun and you have full faith in me, you pray to me, I will not come and remove the sun, which I can do, but I will not do that. I will give you an umbrella. I may open an umbrella and give it to you, walk. Walk, you have to. Third simile Swami gave. See, taking each human birth is equivalent to allowing you to enter in a very big hall where darkness, that means in the world with uh, ignorance. In the darkness, darkness of the hall, you are not able to see and it is laden, it is loaded with uh, the obstacles like furniture, chairs, tables and uh, mics and this and that, a pillar. So the rule of the game is there's one entry and far off there is exit. So you are told that you are pushed into the hall that is in the world with ignorance and you are told that you can find the way out. There is one way out. If you are serious about that, you go on searching and you hit yourself with one obstacle, another obstacle. And if you have devotion to the Lord, you pray, Oh Lord, please help me. He listens to your sincere prayers. He comes, He will not come and sweep the path for you. No, 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 no. What He does, He knows where the switch of the light in this hall is. So he will, out of mercy, he comes and gives you the switches on, light is on. Which light? Not only physical light, light of your discrimination, your intellect. Then he will tell you, now you can see the obstacles. Find the way out through the obstacles. I am not going to change the obstacles. You have to find the way out. So some total is that we have to have devotion towards Him, love towards Him. If we don't have that, then it's not the, that we will not reach the goal, but it may take very long time. Once He told me that you want to reach the goal fast, because I was very short, uh, you know, quick results I wanted. Swami, kuch nahi hota He said, 
make me your driver i know the path i will reach you very fast he said nay make me your pilot i'll take you straight there but we have to make him driver if i consider myself at the doer i want to go there then i may not have the clarity of the paths so surrender allow him to take over but you have to be there just like in bhagavad gita i said we have a right over action not the fruits thereof offer the action offer the fruits of action back to bhagwan not that bhagwan wants uh, uh, asking you give me give me your fruits no 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 please try and understand what it means <clears throat> i'll give you one small example supposing a rich man goes to a temple and uh, he has lot of things in his mind he thinks there's a, a barter relationship he buys a, one box of sweets worth 2000 rupees and uh, offers it to a temple priest is standing there he gives it to the priest priest takes it offers it to the deity keeps it there and takes a piece of coconut broken coconut gives it to to, to the the rich man and rich man is are wow i received prasadam he will go and share this prasadam of coconut small small pieces with everyone he is very happy the lord has accepted my offering and he has given me prasadam at the same time one student white and white he was standing away without having brought anything he had to appear for interview for his job and he was praying to lord please you know please i have to start earning for my parents for my sake and with eyes closed he was praying to the lord that same priest from that box of sweets he brings handful of sweets and brings it to this boy seeing that that young boy is white and white very simple and praying very intensely he gives him he accept are wah prasadam that prasadam could be worth 200 rupees so many nice sweets he said are definitely lord you are indicating i'll get the interview interview will be very happy and i'll get a job now both the cases they took it as a prasadam rich but person did not say are what priest man i gave you the prasadam worth 2000 rupees and you gave me coconut worth 10 rupees and at the same time the student did not say lord i did not bring anything to you and why are you giving me prasadam worth 200 rupees is prasadam so our duty is to put efforts without an eye on the fruits that what will come out go on giving go on doing good and at the right time swami ji will give us the reward in that one wonderful equation i uh, i am reminded of once it so happened once it so happened that uh, one boy student he was very good in the darshan ground he would come in time sit either he would be reading is uh, whatever is supposed to subject matter or a spiritual book very quiet discipline and uh, swami would come he will have a darshan quiet another boy he was a son of vip and uh, vip that gentleman highly devoted to bhagwan it was prayed to bhagwan that talk to my son so swami used to come and give him a pat not once few days it happened one very senior devotee took liberty with bhagwan 
He said, Swamiji, I see something which is uh, not fair. He said, what? What happened? What did you see? Swamiji, this boy every day comes, sits quietly. You don't even look at him. Don't even recognize. When you are in distribution or any work, you, he gets up and does so nicely. But you don't uh, consider. And whereas the other guy, I know what he's doing. He will chat here, he will do this. And you give him a smile. Sometimes you ask him, how are you? Swami, I feel this is not fair. Swami told him, how do you know that I am unfair to that guy who is quiet and disciplined and you think that I don't know what he is doing? I know everything. Then Swami said, I mean, the devotee said, senior devotee, Swami, but I am not able to understand the, your fairness of the formula. Swami said, listen now, please very carefully you take note of this. Very useful formula throughout your life, wherever you go, it will help you. Swami said, when you do a good work, I come and pat you in front of everyone, you are rewarded. So, your spiritual bank balance doesn't go up, it becomes nullified, zero. You did good, you got recognition from Bhagwan. over. If you do good and I don't respond to that and you understand and maintain equanimity that whatever Lord is doing is prasadam to me, you keep quiet, then spiritual score in your spiritual bank goes up by plus one. If you do good and for some reason, something which you might have done previously in this birth or previous birth, very wrong thing you might have done, I come and scold you. You have done good. But in the previous births or some other time, you have done wrong, so I scold you for that. If you have patience, if you understand that whatever he is doing is for my good, you keep quiet, then your spiritual bank balance goes up by two points, two plus two, plus two. On the other side, when you do something wrong, I come and scold you. Then it gets nullified. Your spiritual score will never go down. Because you did something wrong in front of you. Everyone, I insulted you and you felt sorry for that. You repented over. If you do something wrong and you think that I ignore totally, and your ego went up. See, I did something wrong, but Swami did not even notice about that. He doesn't know unless he's told. Then your spiritual bank balance goes down minus one. Another, when you do something wrong and you are scared, but you want no Swami, you should never insult me in front of others. Swami, in the past I have done so much good. You don't insult me. On the contrary, you show Dadagri that, see, Swami doesn't say anything to me. Swami comes and pats you for something good which you have done earlier. So you say, ah, see, to others you can say, I did anything. And see, what did you see? Swami patted me, man. But you don't know your spiritual bank balance goes down by minus two. So, same thing is applicable with us in the world. When we do something good, somebody recognizes you, praises you, over, gaya, zero, 
no benefit in, from the spiritual point of view. That's why they said you do good when you do with the right hand, left hand should not know what good you have done. It should remain with the God to give us the reward. So in the world also, you said I do so much good and people you know, go on uh, abusing me, they misunderstand and this and you react, if you react, gone. But you know that nothing happens without his will. Keep quiet. Your spiritual bank balance goes up by plus two. You go on increasing the score. Whenever there's a sudden need, something happens. From where, how the help will become, you never know. That time, Lord will give you abundance. Because you have already accumulated so much of a score. So, those things, Swami, when he gives, these are the uh, nuggets which Bhagwan shares publicly. I don't think I have ever heard in a public discourse Swami giving this. But with very few people interact, interacting, then they may be able to get it. I have actually not even uh, touched upon the points which I thought that I will share with you. Let me see. Yeah. One uh, nice interaction with Bhagwan. Swami was uh, talking about uh, that uh, why you people don't follow whatever I tell you. Why you people don't follow whatever I give you the command? Then Swami asked me, he used me as the uh, to share with others because he had given uh, with his grace some little understanding that yes, whatever he is doing is for my good. He cannot scold me, he cannot insult me. So whenever some harsh things to be told to all the faculty members, uh, many a times he used, uh, he would choose me. So then uh, uh, Swami was telling why you people are not doing according to then I said, Swamiji, first of all, to understand you, we need your grace. He said, you mean to say that uh, I am not speaking clearly? No, 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 Swami, please don't misunderstand. Uh, I am not saying that. But to understand what's the message you are trying to give us, we need your grace. My grace is always there. Swami, even to realize that your grace is always there, we need a special grace from you. So, Swami said, hey, what do you mean by that? Those who don't follow, that means my grace is not there. So, he was, uh, you know, discussion going on between me. Swami was standing between the two pillars and I was on the third block and uh, talking to Swami, went on. Whatever Swami was telling, he says, what about human efforts? I said, Swami, to put human efforts also, we need your grace. Then again, he was, my neighbor professors, they were pinching me, are you chup bat, yaar? Swami, you are irrit irritating Swami. But I didn't say, I said, Swami, without your grace, nothing can happen. So, seeing this, Swami called me up. I went, jumped. Then, uh, very personal thing, Swami told me something. That you continue what you are doing in the class talking about, uh, just now he mentioned, uh, uh, I used to uh, feel that there's nothing greater in life than talking about Swami, not just to apply butter on him, that Swami is glory, sing, and then he doesn't need anything from anyone, man. For our good, for sanctifying our time. So, Swami said, you continue. Then, I said, Swamiji, why our professors, all of us, we forget that you are God, you are omnipresent. We should follow whatever you say. 
then he you know because this was heard by others he said what i tell you don't see television how many tv antennas are there in your staff quarters 14 antennas go and check afterwards i went literally out of 42 houses in the staff quarter 14 antennas were there those years uh, antennas was uh, required to capture uh, television in the house so he said when you tell someone before telling you must put into practice isn't it i said swami what is the gap please swami explain to us why it is happening so when you are telling clearly your words are not uh, uh, un understandable or so difficult uh, ambiguous or nothing clearly you are telling why please give me reasons then he started dekho bhagya how many of you have firm conviction that sai baba is god if you have firm conviction how can anybody deviate from what i tell or god has told me nothing doing nobody can come in between mera sar niche ho gaya then he said those who have firm conviction also that sai baba is god they have fear i said some fear of what they have fear that if we put swami's teachings into action what will happen to them what will people say they are scared to face those things so they deviate i just correct swami because some discussions were there it was a, had a background i said yes swami he said not only that many of you have personal agenda when i tell that these are the things should be done you people have personal biases then you said no no are what will sai baba know he has studied only 6th class what will he know what to teach for a mba student what is required in the industry how does he know man so you feel no you care for the students more than sai baba so his instruction could be outdated man leave it man thoda deviation karega chalega then he said fourth one see you come you people come from outside you have mental cancer ordinary cancer i cancel no time mental cancer you have to work on yourself he said what is it swami he says for instance you have uh, uh, malaria fever even when i give you sweet dish it will taste bitter for you is it fault of my sweet dish you will say no no it's bitter are aisa kaisa hoga when when i see some of you have diabetes mother find some of the children they have diabetes mother prepares sweet dish but she cannot offer it to the patient or child who has a diabetes because it will work as a poison so what can i do that's very true it is ball is in our court follow his instruction come what may we are not wiser than him he knows past present future and mind you nothing 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 can happen without his will even if we think how can it be are this fellow did that that fellow is doing that he is telling that that nowadays you know uh, swami one good thing swami has done in satya sai institute he has produced so many sai babas that is also his will when you have seen the original swami why do you want to follow the duplicates man again some people ask uh, me are what swami has told you when is uh, prema sai coming hey, what's your problem man have you put into action all the teachings of satya sai baba you're not done that and you are asking more 
थ्रू प्रेम साई यू थिंक प्रेम साई विल गिव यू समथिंग डिफरेंट विच सत्य साई बाबा डिड नॉट नो और डिड नॉट गिव यू फॉलो वॉट यू हैव ऑलरेडी अननेसली गॉसपिंग वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम एंड ट्राइंग टू यू नो वेस्ट आई मीन डेविएट और माइंड इट्स दट यू कॉल एंटरटेनमेंट स्पिरिचुअल शॉपिंग that we like to rather than being serious on a spiritual path yeah i must uh, tell before uh, ending 10 minutes yeah. once i asked swami in an interview room he had called quite a uh, uh, big uh, people big in the sense the authorities occupying uh, director and vice i mean uh, principals and things like that somehow he had included us also in an interview then uh, he gave small discourse which i didn't understand much because it had a background it was early years 1986 onwards swami allowed me to join this was in 1987 so uh i was watching that nobody is asking any spiritual questions it was more of administration and swami guiding them this that then i raised my hand swami ji can i ask one question he just looked at me i just like doing marketing i said swami ji if you listen to this question and if you give the answer to this question not only all of us will be benefited whosoever listens to the question and answer by you will be benefited always eternally he said what is your question i said swami ji i know avatar is with us i don't know how to make best use of avatar i want to listen from avatar's mouth how to make best use of avatar he just stared at me i think oh i asked something wrong maybe he doesn't want to let out his uh, divine secrets he was distributing vibhuti packets to all the interviewees he bypassed me and gave everyone i said oh gaya aaj then last he came to me punch of vibhuti packets hmm such a huge bunch that to receive i had to open both the hands he said hmm. so forcefully that even the from the vibhuti packets corners vibhuti splashed hmm then looked at him he made two sentences love love is god god is love live in love second sentence aham karam i atma is aham is one when akar gets fixed form gets fixed it becomes separate entity multiplicity he left it there it took several months and years to understand especially the second part first part he in the discourses he kept on telling start the day with love spend the day with love fill the day with love end the day with love that is a way to god so love is selfless um, the unconditional giving 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 and not receiving anything in return that is pure love divine love so uh, love is changeless love is fearless so many things he told about love but about self inquiry to find out who you are takes a lot of time it's a challenge but it's not difficult it is time consuming depending upon what our load previous births vasanas tendencies are pulling us away once you understand it's so simple every day even right now i can give so many examples see if somebody asks me is current passing through this wire 
I said, yes. Are you, how are you holding? Yeah, because there's a, a wire is covered with rubber. But definitely current is passing. How do you know? Or otherwise, how do I speak? See, the same wire is connected to this light, fan, that light, this light. Current is one. But it manifests mic. It manifests fan. Sun, uh, beautiful light. Without the current, nothing will work. Same thing, we all are operated by one consciousness, one awareness, God, love, Paramatma. Names is immaterial, whatever name you give. But there's a power, there's a Shakti that operates all of us. Why don't we understand that? It's actually every day we are experiencing, we say, no, 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 hey, path of self-inquiry, Raman Maharshi is very difficult man, it's very challenging. It's not. Just pay attention. Inquire little. You will understand so clearly. For instance, this bottle belongs to me, I may say. It's my bottle. My wife brought it for me in the, from the house. It's my bottle. I'm not the bottle. My bottle. I am different from the bottle. Very easily to be seen. Just text in. This is my hand. I am not hand. My hand. I am not hand. This is my leg. My mind. My mind says so and so. That who you are. Mind is a, just another entity you are using. But who are you? Find out. Go. Spend some time on that. We don't want to do that. Laziness out of habits. Another one. You say that, uh, Are bhai, how did you sleep? Uh, how was your sleep last night? What, sir? I was very disturbed and I did not get sleep at all. Achha, you, what happened? So many thoughts, so many peop people, uh, discussions were coming. And give me some medicine, sir. Uh, I am not able to sleep. Achha. But what happened? No. That means you knew you are not able to sleep. What is that? Another person. How was your sleep? Sleep was good, but I saw a lot of dreams. So, mind was working and uh, I did not have sound sleep. Okay? Third guy, I asked, how was your sleep? The deep sleep. Deep sleep. How do you know? What was that? Sir, I was sleeping so deep. What was that? Show me. Sir, I am telling you, I had a deep sleep. Who are you then? Who was sleeping? One who declares that I was in deep sleep. There is something higher who can also witness the deep sleep. Why don't you ponder over that? Best thing is, live in present, live in now. You deviate your mind here, there, there. Are you live in here. When you are eating thoroughly, all focus should be on eating. At that time, you start thinking about X, Y, Z, A, B, C. No. When you are sleeping, sleep properly. When you are playing, play properly, full focus. Live in now, here and now. By doing that, you will become very alert. Actually, you can be alert while deep sleep. You can see your body is sleeping. But that takes time. Everything comes with the practice. Simply saying, no, this is too difficult. No, nothing is difficult. How did we learn walking, talking, eating? So much of uh, advanced studies we did. How did we? By practice. Learn a little bit, make mistake, again practice, again practice. So, ball lies in our court. Mind you, love cannot be true love unless you know who you are. You are not one, just different people, entities in the body. That consciousness, awareness, Atma, Paramatma, God, whatever you say is names for communication purpose. 
that entity is only one when entity passes through this form bhagya this form uh, siddharth like that it will go on but it is only one to overcome to go beyond they said no you should give a body consciousness rubbish who who says that body consciousness are when somebody cuts my leg i don't even come to know wrong you will definitely come to know but with awareness okay pain is there can i bear it your capacity to bear may go up but you will come to know even the ant walking on you you will come to know that awareness will be there as you dive deep within and just now this uh, morning i mean sorry before we started the talk they took me there swami transported me there 1989 what he had given the experience see 1987 he told me inquire who am i so i tried level bust swami said go within go within find out who you are i didn't know where where do i go within man i used to sit silently inquiring him nothing will come then i said swami has told me go within find out should i do like hanuman tear myself in see who is sitting inside rama or or blood it will be all blood then what is the meaning of go within go within meaning withdraw your mind which is projecting outside take it back i sincerely i tried day and night months together years together one day in the evening swami was going out with colonel jogada for some discussion outside the mandir around 7:30 or so i was still seated after bhajans i used to sit up to 8:30 9 o'clock because swami has given the assignment inquire who am i so without any fruits but i have to put the efforts just like if a guru tells that uh, you know go and hit this pillar uh, because uh, you thought that the pillar is to be brought down you go and hit after 100 days are kuch hota to nahi hai my hand is getting hurt and then you go and tell uh, a guru that uh, master what is this nonsense you are telling me you go and hit pillar nothing happens to me then guru said did i tell you that uh, um, make the pillar fall down you do what i tell you so swami had told me inquire who am i and go within he kept on doing kept on doing kept on doing so one evening when swami ji and jogara they were going and uh, my eyes were closed because he had given the assignment and uh, um, now my ears were alert then swami and jogara they were talking and going and i said now let me have one additional darshan swami has come out but again are swami has asked me to find out go within find out who i am so dilemma i said are yaar chhodo abhi why should i waste darshan additional darshan i opened my eyes and looked at him swami came and gave me a whack and he went away theek hai then they came back i was still there moment they went back to interview room and swami retired physically and then i also came home next day morning again after darshan which used to be over by 7 college used to start at 9 o'clock and up to 8:45 8:50 i used to be sitting in bhajan hall because bhajans will start at 9 o'clock so again i went and sat and continue my self inquiry that day that is next day of swami gave me a whack i went and sat sat to find out go within moment i sat zup mind went deep inside i was like you know suffocating not physically then hey, what is happening then i saw this body this me as one transparent sphere and that is fair are he care it was expanding 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 so much expanded boundaries were not seen but it was me whole thing that oh this is what i am 
Everything is included in me. These buildings, these roads, these cars, the trees, everything is in me. Wow! This is what Swami wants. That you give up identification with the body. Not give up the body consciousness. Don't limit yourself to the body. When you go within, when the mind, when the thoughts, they go and merge in that consciousness, I amness, whatever name you say, you expand. It's just like a space. This hall, hey, that's such a, such a nice big hall. It is bounded by the walls. Here, here, here. If I remove this wall, hey, this hall becomes very big. Remove this wall, hey, this big. And this hall says, Are, you know, I'm uh, so many discourses Bhagwan has given, so many people have come. I'm very important. Look at the way I'm decorated, this, that. Because he includes all the belongings of the heart, uh, of the hall. But if the hall identifies that it is a limited space, no, 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 so many people cannot sit in uh, my capacity. But because it's calculating only in terms of space. But if you uh, consider this space and that space is not different, only walls, remove the walls, then space is unlimited. Same thing, limit, don't limit yourself to this body and the mind, then the whole universe is you. All of us are connected with that power, with that consciousness, that awareness, that God. And just, I will end with that, when I reached there, he took me there, zoop, Swami, again, within moments, transported me over there. I said, wow, Swami. So it's not impossible. Yes, it requires, uh, it requires constant, continuous efforts. And it's not that, are itna do saal ho gaya, ek saal ho gaya, kuch nahi milta hai. No, it's none of your business to judge. Suddenly, it will manifest. It comes only with His grace. To earn His grace, you have to put efforts. Don't judge that it's fruitful or fruitless. Go on putting. Follow His teachings. Go on doing to the best of your ability. He will do the rest for you. Thank you very much. We stop here and I am sure that all of you would have enjoyed. God bless you.